Hey boys and girls, today we're going to be talking about volume. And the first part of volume that we're going to be looking at is estimating volume. So first we need to discuss what exactly is volume. I want you to think about that. Volume is the amount of space that liquid takes up. So if you have a cup of water, how much water will fit in that cup? If you have a bowl of cereal, how much milk is in that cereal? Another word that's going to be brought up in your work this week is capacity. So what is capacity? Capacity is how much an object can hold. So volume and capacity are different, okay? So if you have a freezer, how much can your freezer hold? It doesn't have to be a liquid. The capacity is how much an object can hold. So in your work this week, the first thing you're going to look at is estimating liquid volume. So it says the water bottle below has a capacity of one liter. So that means it can hold one liter of water. Estimate the capacity of a large bowl using liters. Use a one liter container and a large bowl to solve this problem. So if you were to physically take this bowl and this liter of water and dump this liter of water into the bowl, how many times do you think you could fit the liters in there. So how many times would you dump water in there? If you, this was all the way filled up to the one liter mark and you dumped one time, would the bowl be completely filled up? Probably not, okay? Fill it up another time. Do you think that that would be full? So you have to think about this and think about your real life. Volume is a lot about real life and how you can use this in your life and think about how you have milk and you're dumping milk into your bowl of cereal. If you fill that up, how many times are you gonna fill it up with the milk? If you have one big gallon of milk, is it gonna take that entire gallon of milk to fill that small bowl? Probably not. But if you have a smaller quart of milk, the smaller containers of milk that are about this big, then you might need, you would have less times to fill up bowls of cereal. You might run out of your milk in two or three days if you only had about a quart of milk. At the bottom says, when you estimate and measure things, remember to be precise. What unit would you use to estimate the capacity of the large bowl? So our unit is liters, and that's what that L stands for. So if I write liters, liters equals L. So if you see the abbreviation L, that stands for liters. So if I have a pail, Okay, a pail is another word for a bucket. So it says a milliliter is about 20 drops from an eyedropper, okay? A milliliter is about 20 drops of an eyedropper. So if I have a milliliter, it is smaller than a liter. The way I remember it, it's milli means small, and then liter is bigger, okay? So if you have a whole bottle of water, this container of water is about one liter. This eyedropper, is 20 times, so remember we did the penny experiment and we had a dropper? This would be if you dropped it about 20 times, that would be one milliliter. So again, it's capacity is the amount of con a container can hold measured in liquid units. Two metric units of capacity are milliliters and liters. So if we're talking about metric units, we're talking about milliliters and milliliters, sorry. And remember, milliliters is smaller. Step one. So you're gonna think, okay, if I have a big bucket, am I gonna be measuring in milliliters? Would I wanna take an eyedropper and drop it 20 times and say, okay, that's one milliliter, 20 more times, that's two milliliters. How long would it take you to fill up that bucket? It would take a long time, right? Now, if you had a big liter of water, so think about all of you guys that bring your water into school and you set it on your desk, if you had one of those full, how many times would you dump that water into the bucket? Okay, so it would make more sense in step two to use liters. If you use milliliters, you would be there for several days. So I want you to think about how many times you think you would fill this container to make the pail full. You have a guess in your head? Let's see. The pail holds about eight liters. So if you were around seven, eight, or nine, that's a good estimate. You would have to fill it eight times in order to make it full. So let's look here. 
Number three says, is this 250 milliliters or two liters? And I know it's kind of hard to see, but it's milk, okay? And it's not all the way full, okay? Would you have 250 milliliters or two liters? Think, remember, if you're thinking of one liter, I want you to take your hands and make the size of your drink. So if you have a, um, a cup that you bring to school, okay? and you, it has the nice fancy cap, or maybe you just have a cup with a straw, okay? And you bring it to school, it's the corner of your desk. It's about this tall, okay? If you had two of those, is that more or less in that picture? If you're thinking more, you're correct, okay? So that's two liters would be way too big. So 250 milliliters would make more sense. That would be a closer estimate. Now, if you think of this pail, this is another pail, would you have five milliliters, which are very, very small, or one liter, okay? So on my desk in my classroom, I had a pail that looked like this that had all my students' names on it and little sticks. If I dumped a whole bottle of water in there, it would be about one liter. So again, a liter would make most sense. So now you have to think of the pictures in your head. It was nice that they put pictures for you for three and four, but for five and six, a bottle of juice, okay? So if you're thinking of a bottle of juice, like a juice box that you have, is that gonna be 10 milliliters or one liter, okay? And this, I wish it gave a little bit more of an explanation because sometimes bottles of juice can be the same size of a bottle of water. So that would be closer to one liter. Now, if you only had a small, small bottle of juice, 10 milliliters would probably still be too little. It would be closer to one liter, but that's a tricky one because a bottle of juice can, if you have the Capri Suns um, that we have in class, then sometimes those um, are a lot smaller, but still 10 milliliters would probably be way too small. So it would be closer to one liter. So we're thinking about which one is the best estimate. Remember, it's not gonna be exact. Estimates are not expected to be the correct answer. It's just a educated guess. A cereal bowl. So again, if you're thinking of a cereal bowl and you're dumping your milk in there, think of if you had three bottles of water that were all filled with milk about this size, would you dump three of them in there or would you use 300 milliliters? If you're thinking 300 milliliters, you're correct. Three liters would be way too much. Your cereal bowl would be overflowing with milk. Keep moving this, sorry guys. So now we're looking at how do we actually measure capacity? So let's look at some examples. Eric is cleaning his fishbowl and wants to know how much water he needs to refill the fishbowl. How can he find the capacity of the fishbowl? So in this, when you're finding capacity and you're finding volume, you would need a tool that measures the liquid amount. So you probably have seen something similar to this in your parents' kitchen. So that's a fun activity that you guys can do. When you get done watching this video, go in your parents' kitchen and see if you have any measuring tools that you can see have milliliters and liters on them. And you can practice measuring milliliters of water, measuring liters of water, okay? If you fill up a cup of water, what you can do is take that cup and make it. First, make an, estimation, an estimation, okay? Think how many liters or milliliters is it? Then take that cup of water and use the tool in your parents' kitchen to figure out an exact measurement. So if you are looking at trying to find the exact measurement, it's pretty easy. You would just pour the amount that you have into the tool that shows the measurement on there. So here in this fish bowl, he pours the fish bowl into the one liter container, okay? Here's one liter, okay? Do you see how he still has, oh, do you see how he still has water left in there? Yeah, so he would have to continue doing what? filling the bowl until there was no, I'm not filling the bowl, filling the measure measuring device until there was no water left. So he filled one time, he filled another time, he filled a third time, there's still water left. He filled a fourth time, there's still water left. He filled a fifth time and then it says here, the one liter container was filled five times. So how many, five, how many liters is that? It would be five liters. Here's another example. When only part of the one liter container is filled, you use milliliters. So if it's less than a liter, you would measure it with less. So it would be less than a liter. It would be 500, 100, 200, 300, 
all the way up into 900 milliliters. So if I'm counting, it would be 100 mil milliliters. 200 milliliters, 300 milliliters, 400 milliliters, and you keep count going until you get to 900 milliliters. Once you get to 1,000, <clears> 1,000 <throat> milliliters equals one liter. So if I'm looking at measuring the capacity of this mug, how much coffee can this mug fill? That's really important to me because I like my coffee. So if I'm filling this up, I pour my coffee in my coffee cup, and then I think, how much coffee can fit in here? And I pour it into my measuring device and you can see right here where the line is and I count my lines one two three it would be 300 milliliters because I'm on my third line it would be milliliters again because it's less than one liter again if I'm measuring this pot so if I want to make pasta and I need to fill this pot up with water Okay, and I want to think, how much water did I use? I can transfer the water from my pot, pour it into my measuring device. Well, this filled up one liter because the whole thing is full. Then I pour it into the next one. The whole thing is full. So one liter. Two liters. And then you can see this is less than a liter. So it would be. 500 liters. You can see right where the line is would be 500, oh, not 500 liters, sorry, 500 milliliters. So total, it would be two liters and 500 milliliters. Let's practice. What is the total capacity represented in each picture? So let's count. One liter, two liters, three liters, four liters. Each of those are full, so they would be four liters. I have four containers all the way full. Here I've got one liter. Now this one is not all the way full, so I've got to count my tick marks. And I can go right up to 500 because that's easy. It's already marked and I can count. What's one more hundred than 500? 500, 600. So it would be one liter and 600 milliliters. So it's pretty easy just counting the liters that you have and making sure you're using the correct measurement and making sure you're counting your tick marks. Again, if I look at all of these marks, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, my 10th mark is one liter. So every mark equals 100 milliliters. That's very important for you to remember. Some more practice. Again, one liter. Now let's count our marks, 500, 600, 700, 800, so that would be one liter, 800 milliliters for number five. Number six, one liter, two liters, three liters. Pretty easy for that one. And then for number seven, one liter, two liters. Now this one's one below 500, so you can subtract 500 minus 100 and get 400, or you can count 100, 200, 300, 400. So this would be two liters and 400 milliliters. So this is pretty simple, guys. You just have to remember that if I'm talking about capacity and I'm talking about volume, I am talking about liquid. Okay, we've talked about area, and that is the amount of space that you can physically put something on. Okay that has takes up space. Volume is liquid. It's liquid, whatever liquid items you have, you would measure in volume. You can't measure the area of a um, the liquid in a coffee cup because when you spill that out, what's gonna happen? That liquid's gonna go everywhere, right? It's not gonna stay in the same space. Area is the same space that does not move. Volume, the liquid can move. So that's why you have these measuring cups that you use to measure the volume. All right. Enjoy learning about volume.